This is our Forex blog for August 23rd, 2011. I left it running overnight, which lets you see both the real-time statistical trend strength or weakness. Anything at or above 80 is extreme strength uh, or weakness if it's red. Underneath that we have you know, the last few hour trend, which you can actually set yourself and weight it in any, any way that you want. If you want, um, you know, it's always best to trade if the real-time trend matches a lo little bit longer term trend. And so this, these are the weightings uh, with our various tools that allow you to um, adjust that. So at a, uh, you know, last night during the Asian session, the dollar here went weak, and you know, unfortunately, the weekly and monthly, uh, I'm sorry, the daily and weekly trend was still up at that time. But the monthly trend's down. You primarily, if you're an intraday trader, you know, want both of these to line up. So anytime there's weakness, you want to sell the dollar, sell the dollar sell the dollar, an hour goes by, sell the dollar, you know, there's not that much weakness there, you might not choose to sell it, sell it here at one, and so forth. That pretty much stayed red all day, <coughs> showing you the intermediate trend of the dollar and the real-time uh, bar by bar uh, trend strength or weakness in this case is down. Uh, the euro pretty much was mixed, uh, had some strength, once it lost its um, intermediate term weakness right here around 310, all the time frame trends line up, you want to be buying the euro against one of the weakest ones. You can see this is quite weak. The yen, really, you know, at that point, the last wave down, there was more weakness on the dollar than the yen. So it was pretty much a no-brainer. You wanted to, you know, sell the, uh, I'm sorry, buy the euro dollar at about 310 afterwards. Let's put this on layer 8 so I can... So you can use a regular chart. You can see uh, the 310 right here. You were looking to buy it. It didn't quite yet break out over its high, but it soon did within five minutes. So you actually had kind of a five minute head start to get into this trade, and it really shot up about 100 pips. Um, on a five minute bar, it's really hard once it takes off to know where to get into the trade at, but on a range chart, you can. So let's add uh, a tool that we came up with to help you figure out how many pips per bar. Range chart, instead of a time-based bar, uh, each bar is based on X number of pips. Uh, so from 3 to noon, the most active trading times, this one on average moves about 6.55 pips per, per bar. So you might want to create, and here's how you do it, Euro dollar. Instead of ticks per bar, it's, it's pips per bar. So we'll just round down to, or actually we'll use 7 pips, 7 R. This is a 7 range bar chart. All right, so <clears throat> it's downloading the data right now. Let's put this on layer 8 too. And what this gives you is a much clearer uh, picture of volatility. Since this is the average number of pips per bar, uh, it, it does. You can risk a very logical uh, and intelligent amount of pips per bar uh, or you know, for your stop. So let's say when this broke out right here, you're in it. You can put your stop one to three pips underneath the low swing right here and if you weren't in the trade initially the first down bar that, that you know start, continues up you can get into this trade right here whereas on a five minute chart it really never gave you that opportunity it's still pretty early into the trend uh, what's interesting about range bar charts is they're very geometric you can kind of uh, on most moves you know draw your trend line underneath there and when it breaks get out or at least exit half your trade and let's say you you thought all right, I'm going to get in on this after a pullback. Well, you get on this pullback right here. It goes up. It kind of chops around. It's pretty clear it's not going higher. You had every opportunity to get out of that trade with a small 10 pip win, a break even, 5 pip win, or you wouldn't have lost more than 3 or 4 pips on that trade. Pull back a little bit more. This was one of the stronger trends. You get into it again, and you can see that trend, you know, continued up. You'd probably be out of your trade up here at 89. So, you know, you made a lot of money. You either made a few pips or you lost a few pips, but you didn't get hurt any, anywhere that bad. The euro was super strong, dollar was weak all day. You bought the next pullback and you know at a very advantageous price point. Let's compare it to the five minute chart. Where would you have got in on this on the five minute chart? It doesn't look nearly as smooth of a pullback uh, as the range bar. You know, where would you have gotten out of this on the five minute chart? People that trade with range bar or time based charts are at a really severe disadvantage. Uh, because you, you lose the geometric patterns, 
uh, you know you don't spot very low risk high probability entries um, as well now the key is to use the currency meter to spot the most likely to continue trend currencies which you know the dollar was weak the euro became super strong uh, the Australian also was strong uh, starting at um, 10.30 last night, right? What was, uh, the dollar was uh, was weak at that point and at noon, or I'm sorry, midnight became weak. There was some intense weakness at 1.30. So the Australian dollar also was a good one to buy last night. And I'm just bringing this up so we can come in kind of, uh, you know, 1 o'clock you're looking for buys. It went up about 60 pips. This one moves a little bit less per pips per bar than the euro does. So instead of using a 7 pips per bar uh, on the Australian dollar, we're going to use a 5 pips per bar. Because it has lower volatility, that means you should risk less pips on your trades, 5R. Uh, you're risking less pips because you're very likely to make less pips. You know, Not always, sometimes you'll make more. But uh, starting, let's scroll back uh, at midnight. You know, you're looking to buy this pullback right here. You know, kind of went up and chopped around. Whether you got in and stayed in this trade or you got out, you bought this entry right here, maybe lost seven pips, got in on this pullback right here. You can see it, it you know, that trend continued. It went from 57 all the way up to 84, 24 something pip move. And anytime you have a sideways rectangle pattern that breaks out, it's usually a high odds trade. Um, this is kind of a a wedge pattern where the volatility gets smaller and smaller and it breaks out very high probability and usually strong trends will go to the next Fibonacci uh, profit target level which is uh, right here and right here so either you got out the first or the second Fib target um, and it went a little bit beyond that but you can see you pretty much captured the majority meat of that move so use a currency meter if the real-time strength matches the intermediate strength which you can set and wait in any way you want. Uh, the New Zealand also was strong last night. I'm just on another monitor checking out the average volatility on this. This one's 4.84 pips per bar. So we'll you know leave that the same. New Zealand dollar also was quite strong last night. In fact, the daily trend was up uh, initially in this, uh, whereas the Australian wasn't. Uh, and so this, you know, starting the day off, you kind of have a little uh, breakout right here. So it's really slow and acting. You have a nice little, uh, very low slope pullback right here, and you also have this, you know, breakout right here. So you know, you either had some small 10 to 15 pip moves, or you got into it uh, with your initial stop underneath the low here. And every time it made a higher high and pullback, you know, very shallow amount, you you raise your stop, raise your stop, raise your stop. And at some point, after you know, it goes up one wave, two waves, three waves, it's pretty likely to stall I would probably exit at you know one of these fib targets right here and it also overshot it by about 10 pips uh, and then pulled back most of the time it's going to stop at the first or second fib target you can see the CAD you know it's kind of bounces around the intermediate term strength is is up and down uh, but it's pretty strong real-time weakness here uh, intermediate term weakness daily weekly and monthly trend at four is down uh, you know, you have a, a few hours of looking to sell the CAD against the stronger one. The Euro was quite strong during that time. <clears throat> if you trade a five minute chart, you know, and you want to uh, come up with a range bar chart, the Euro CAD uh, moves about six pips on average for every five minute bar. If you want to use 15 minute bars, it moves uh, approximately 11 pips per bar. So this way you can set intelligently the number of pip pips per bar based on that currency's past average volatility for different bars of the day. Uh, so EuroCAD, we're going to use uh, six pips per bar. And when the Euro is strong and the CAD was weak from four to uh, seven, you're basically looking to buy this. Uh, in effect, uh, the Euro really became strong uh, at 310 or so, which is about right here. Uh, the CAD uh, didn't really go super weak until 4, which is right here, um, you know, on, on all time frames. So maybe in this instance, you were, you might not have been watching this one and you might not have uh, got into that trade. This is, it's really risky buying the highs, but usually a rectangle pattern like this breakout works. 
you would have actually got stopped out with a very tiny maybe 10 or 12 pip loss and anytime I lose I'm a little bit more cautious before getting back in normally we'd be looking to buy this pullback right here uh, but it broke out pullback didn't break that low I might have you know waited for it to go above this high right here before I personally would have got in and you can see it went from 70 up to 10 that's a 40 pip move you lost 10 pips on the first one you made you know you're never going to catch every pip in this but like I said if you move your stop underneath the lows underneath here underneath here you got out at 4300 you made 30 pips you lost 10 made 30 you netted 20 and you might have also bought this pullback right here at, at six o'clock um, you know that's right on the verge of where uh, the CAD's weakness kind of stops so if you're watching the um, currency meter in real time you're waiting for the next uh, weakness to come in which is uh, closer to eight and if the euro is strong at eight you trade it but it's not the euro lost its strength so you know basically you're done with this pair at that time there's no point of you know r risking your time w wasting your time on it uh, at 630 here the New Zealand's strong now it's always better when you have real-time strength intermediate strength daily weekly monthly are all the same same direction you had that earlier in the euro and that's why you know the euro dollar and euro yen were such good trades notice you know again the the yen also is weak uh, the euro yen on a five minute bar moves about six pips per bar. Let's also show the euro against the yen from um, three to about six. Here's three o'clock right here. You see this nice little rectangle pattern. Uh, it breaks out and unlike the other one, the first trade on this one works. You didn't get stopped out with a loss. Uh, once it starts going up, you might want to move your stop underneath here. You're risking the tiniest amount possible. And again, you know, whenever you have this type of move that just takes off like that, draw your trend lines underneath there and you know you're usually best to exit when it breaks down underneath there also on range bars when you have them properly sized you'll tend to see wicks uh, at the bottom uh, predicting an up move you know wicks at the high uh, you know predicting a down move and I'm talking about the majority of the bars wick not you know just partially wick like these two or this one you know uh, big big huge wicks with a very tiny amount of red or green in it oftentimes are reversals at the extremes. You don't get that on uh, regular bar charts quite as much. Now you could just trade, you know, every time you see incredible strength come in, um, if you really get a lot of spike here at 930, you can trade it against the weakest one. I find your odds improve if you match it up with, you know, some of the longer term trends. Uh, this was the strongest the pound has been in uh, about five hours it had you know about four hours of weakness it comes in right here it's for some strength that's likely to continue 30 minutes an hour so you can profit on that uh, and get into that trade you know right away at uh, 9 30 right then what is the weakest one well before that the CAD was but unfortunately it's not weak then I hate when you know things don't line up uh, really the euro uh, appears to be the weakest then at 9 30 so why not trade the strongest pound against the weakest euro this one moves on average 3.3 pips per bar so I might round up and use four euro pound you want to sell it uh, around 930 we'll put it four pips per bar on here so here's 930 uh, and the reason that this fell before 930 was you know the euro was weak and the pound was weak the, the pound was less weak than the euro and therefore this fell but here at this point right here you kind of have this nice little uh, anytime you have up and down movement like this and it forms a little box uh, as long as there's at least five bars uh, it's relatively safe to sell the breakout of it and so it breaks down your stops the pip above the high here it comes down and um, you know pulls back comes down and comes back up again you don't get stopped out it just makes it barely you know you could always trade every little wave of this you could get out of this trade here get back in get out short again get out at this point it makes a higher high and you know at 11 o'clock uh, guess what or even at 1030 the pound is no longer super strong so you're not really looking to sell it anymore it's pretty much a no-brainer this is about as simple as trading we can uh, make